Okay, welcome students who are taking math for business and finance and math applications. This is the chapter 8 word problems, the assigned odd number problems. And as always, if you don't understand something in the video, you can pause it, rewind it, watch it again several times. And if you still don't understand it, you know, feel free to telephone and, and speak with an instructor or you know, contact us by clicking on contact us uh, from your My Courses page. Okay, so let's move on. Get me the next slide here. All right, there we go. All right, pro word problem 8-19. And I have to get my pen. All right, so Barry J., a gown manufacturer, received an order of 600 prom dresses from China. Um, her cost is $35 a gown. If her markup based on selling price is 79%, what is the price of each gown? Right. So this 600 prom dresses is irrelevant. You know, has nothing to do with solving this problem because it's asking us what is the price of each gown. And our formula, um, selling price is equal to cost plus the markup. So if our and it's what is it's asking us what is the selling price of each gown so if the selling price is equal to the cost which is $35 plus the markup and the markup is 79% based on the selling price so that's 79% times s this times the selling price and then from here, all it is is just a matter of doing the math. Selling price is 35 plus 0 0.79 times S. We want to isolate. We want to get all of the S's on the same side of the equal sign. So when we bring it across the equal sign here, we're going to change the sign. So that means S will be a minus 0.79s and that will be equal to 35. So um, 1s minus 0 0.79 is 0.21s and that's equal to 35. And then to isolate the s we divide both sides by 0 0.21. Those cancel out and my S ends up being um, 166.67. Let me just double check that. Okay, 35 divided by 0.21. Right, 166.67. Okay. And then, of course, if you wanted to check it, you can um, take your S would be equal to the 35, you would divide that by 1 minus your 0 0.79, because remember we're talking about the reciprocal here, so you know um, that's going to be the 0 0.21, and so S is going to be equal to the $35 divided by the 0 0.21. And of course, that's going to be 166.67 okay, is the check. All right, next problem, 821. Okay, sorry about that. Um, for that little pause there, that's because I had typed the word problem up incorrectly, but here it is. Cecil Green sells golf hats. He knows that most people will not pay more than $20 for a golf hat. So not paying more than $20 would be like the selling price. Cecil needs a 40% markup on cost, right? So that's 40% markup on the cost, not the selling price. What would Cecil pay for his golf hats? Right. Well, S is equal to C plus M. Okay. And if the selling price is $20 and it's a 40% markup, um, I'm sorry, 
we don't know what the cost is, and the markup is 40% of the cost, right? We just basically need to do the math here. So this is $20 is equal to C plus 0.4 C. And so 1 plus 0.4, that's 20, is equal to 1.4 C. And then we divide both sides by 1.4 to isolate the C. They cancel. So we have 20 divided by 1.4, which is equal to C. And that is equal to fourteen dollars and twenty nine cents. Okay. Um, if we wanted to check this, we could say that our cost would be equal to the selling price over one plus the percent markup. on the cost. Okay. So our selling price is $20. The cost would equal $20 over 1 plus percent markup, which would be 1 plus 40, 40 0.4, I'm sorry, 40%. So the cost would be the 20 over 1.4 and that, when you divide that into that, you end up with your 14.29 as your cost, as your double check. Okay. Notice it's very, very sim similar, um, and you might have noticed that in the previous problem that um, right over here, let me get green, right over here, um, when we canceled out the 0 0.21, we were left with the selling price is equal to 35 over 0 0.21. Well, that's the same thing we have right here as part of our, our self-check, okay? And we have the same situation over here in that um, right here, when we're doing all of that math, we end up with 20 over 1.4, which is part of our self-check right here, okay? So um, it's basically two different ways of, look, of doing it, um, and one checks upon the other. Do you have to do both? No. I mean, me personally, I probably wouldn't do, this, uh, do the second way of checking, but I just want you to be aware that you're arriving at the same answer two different ways. Okay? Right, 823. Okay, it says here, Brownsville, Texas boasts having the southernmost international seaport and the largest city in the lower Rio Grande Valley. Ben Supple, an importer in Brownsville, has just received a shipment of Peruvian opals that he is pricing for sale. He paid $150 um, for the shipment. If he wants a 75% markup, calculate the selling price based upon selling price, then calculate the selling price based upon cost. Okay, so we're doing two different things here. We're going to base it upon this. Um, we're going to mark up based upon the selling price, and then we're going to uh, do the calculation as the markup based upon the cost. And you'll see that it does make a difference. You know, you're not going to get the same answer because you're talking about two different things. Right? And you'll see that as we go along here. So formula is C is equal to cost plus the markup. And so we'll do the selling price first, all right? Markup based upon the selling price. So we have our selling price is equal to our cost, which is $150. So you paid $150 for the shipment, that's the cost. And the markup is 75% based upon the selling price. So when we do the math, okay, S um, minus, 0.75 s is equal to 150 so that's 0.25 s is equal to 150 and then of course we divide both sides by 0.25 they cancel so our s ends up being 600 okay now uh, based upon the cost we have our selling price is equal to, we know our cost is 150 and we're marking it up 
75% based upon that cost of 150. Okay, so S is equal to 150 plus 75% uh, of 150. So if we take 150 times 0.75, we end up with 112.50 and add those two together and we get oh, wrong thing 150 plus 112.5 and we end up with 262.50 okay now the thing that I want to point out here, um, and I'm going uh, when I point this out, that I'm going to stop the video, is that you know, in we know our cost, okay. And if you have a product, you you know, obviously you need to know your cost. Now the question becomes, you know, two different things. Um, you know, the percentage that you want to mark up, all right. You want to know what that is, what you know, or have some idea. And you want to know um, if you're going to mark it up based upon the selling price or the cost. You know, obviously, if you're marking it up based upon the selling price, I mean, you know, here's the selling price of $600 less than $150 means you're going to end up with $450 in profit. Okay. And, but if you mark it up based upon the cost, you know, minus $150 there, so you end up with, uh, what is this, hundred and you end up with $112 in profit. Okay, or, um, so you know there is a difference between the two. Now the question becomes: Well, you say, oh well, I should always do it upon selling price because, you know, obviously I make more money. Um, well, yeah, that's true, but it all de also depends upon how much the market will bear. Okay, uh, you know, if you, you the, the basic the whole idea here is is that you know what you're when you think about your income statement, your profit and loss, you have revenues less your expenses, okay, which gives you your profit or loss. Um, so you have on your, you know, that's revenues less expenses gives you your profit or loss on your income statement. Um, in the revenue section, okay, you have your uh, sales less your cost of goods sold, which gives you your gross profit, right? So that's basically saying something like, okay, it costs me $50 to make a table and I sell it for $100, I end up with $50 in gross profit. And from the gross profit, then you take away all of the rest of your expenses and that's what ends up being your profit or loss, okay? So this here is all in the revenue section. So what I'm trying to point out here is that you need to know your cost and you also need to know what your markup is going to be in order for you to be able to break even. So you have a, you know, zero profit and loss. Now, if you're sitting there and saying, well, you know, I need to mark it up 75% and based upon cost, which would give me $112.50. And then when I take out all the rest of my expenses, okay, I end up with zero profit or loss. And that's just great. Okay. Um, now you know that you can price anything above um, $112.50 and that's going to directly impact your bottom line here, meaning you're going to have profit. Uh, sure, you could have marked up, you know, immediately and set off $450. Right? And then, yeah, you're talking about a lot more profit here, okay? Um, because you're into the money, you're, you're uh, above your break-even point. But the issue becomes, you know, how do you know that's the correct amount? I mean, if you don't, if it's priced too high, you're not going to make any sales. I mean, who's going to pay $450? Um, uh, you know, I'm sorry, $600 is the selling price for, let's say, I don't know. Um, a little footstool, okay? You know, you're a woodworker and you make a footstool and you're gonna sell a footstool for $600? I don't think so. It doesn't matter what kind of wood it's made out of, okay? Um, so the whole idea behind doing these calculations and, you know, it gives you a range with, with, with which to think about, 
It's not a set in stone number. But if you don't have this thought process, then you're just guessing. Let's say, you know, here I said it was a markup of 75%. Well, what if you said, okay, I'm going to buy something and I'm going to uh, mark it up. Well, let's say I'm going to buy something for $50 and I'm going to mark it up 100% on the 50. All right, so in other words, I'm, I'm doubling it. Okay, you know, that's just great because you only need 75% in order to break even. All right, and that you know, it is probably within a price range that most people could, um, you know, afford. But on the other side of the coin, um, in the restaurant industry, their markup percentage, you know, their gross profit percentage, they work upon a gross profit percentage here of about 26%. You know, so if you're marking up your food 75%, you know, you, people aren't going to buy. It's going to be way too overpriced, right? And so that's the reason why you go through all of this and why you have, you know, you look at marking up on the selling price versus marking up on the cost, okay? All right, so with that said, I'm finished, and I'll see you in the next uh, video.